Again, everyone, thank you so much for your faithful witness today. It's, it's great to be with all of you, especially as we celebrate the Lord's presence in word and in sacrament. Just this week, I had the opportunity to see the St. Thomas More exhibit at the John Paul II Institute in D.C. It is absolutely magnificent in honor of one of our patron saints. If you have not had the chance to see it, I'd encourage you to try to do so. The bad news is it ends this month. So, but while there, as I have done a number of times because of my great love for and devotion to St. John Paul II, I went downstairs to see the, the presentation on our Holy Father. And there, uh, one of the most dramatic moments is the video. The video that, that recalls that, that horrific day when he was shot. I don't think we would ever forget that. And in that same room are photographs of John Paul II visiting the man who shot him in prison and embracing him, which is exactly what he said he would do. A couple days after being shot, he, he announced to the world, I forgive my brother in Christ. And I think the world was shocked. How can you forgive someone who, who tried to, to take your life? How could you do that? But as you have reflected on this morning in your talk, for a Christian, that's really not that extraordinary. It's the mandate of the gospel, as we have just heard. It's the theme of your conference, breaking free through forgiveness. For it's true. It's only by pardoning and loving one another that we can experience the freedom and the joy and the peace that only Christ can give. At this time in, in our lives, we, not, we may not be asked to forgive someone who has tried to take our life, but perhaps we are being asked to forgive someone who has killed our spirit or killed our happiness or our peace, or self-confidence. And it could be a spouse, or a child, or a friend, or colleague, or even a so-called enemy. And we may say to ourselves, but that's not easy. It's not easy to do that. And Jesus responds, no, it's not. But it's possible. And today we reflect upon how is it possible? How do I find that desire and grace and strength to forgive as Jesus teaches? And may I just suggest a few practical ways. First of all, it begins with gratitude. If we remember how many times our merciful God has forgiven us, and reminded us that there is no sin, there is no failure greater than his mercy and love, and allowed us to celebrate those gifts in the beautiful sacrament of penance so that we may go forth and begin anew over and over again. Because God never gives up on us. And he asks so little in return simply that we go forth and forgive one another. And I think we can only do that if we remember with gratitude. And secondly, I think a way that, that we can keep bitterness and an unwillingness to forgive one another is by remembering. By remembering that we only see the surface. 
we only see the outside of a person. It's only God who sees deep within and is aware of everything going on within a person's life and within the deepest part of of their hearts. We only see the surface. And some, so sometimes we'll be rash in our judgment. It reminds me of a, a story of a bishop friend of mine, one of the nicest, kindest men you'd ever want to meet. But he tells this story very humbly on himself, that he was at a parish and celebrated Mass and wanted to greet all the people afterwards, but there was no parish hall, so he had to do so, he had to do so in the church. And so he's standing there, and there's a long line of of people waiting to greet him. And for some reason, the whole time he's looking, his focus went on someone who was talking on the phone, talking and talking the whole time while in line. He said, I have to admit, it was driving me crazy. And he said, that person finally made his way to the front of the line. And he said, Bishop, he said, my wife so much wanted to be here tonight, but she's very sick. She's dying of cancer, and she's only hoping that she can talk to you and you can give her a blessing. And he said, I'll never forget that as long as I live. And so, so how important it is for us to ask for that grace that God will give us so we can say, Lord, only you, only you can see deep within. Help me to see this person that I'm struggling with. Help me to see this person as you see this person. For only you see within the heart. And finally, if we are going to forgive as Jesus forgives, we have to realize we need God's help. Because sometimes it's very, very difficult to do. But it was the Lord on the cross, having endured ridicule and rejection and hatred and persecution, who forgave. And from that cross says this grace, this power, is given to all of you to do the same. And so how important it is for us to turn to God when we find it difficult to forgive. And maybe pray the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. At this Holy Eucharist, dear sisters in Christ, We are reconciled with God and with one another. And we are recipients of God's divine love and mercy. And so strengthen with these gifts. May we go forth with a renewed commitment to imitate him by loving and pardoning one another, by breaking free through forgiveness so that we may know the peace, the serenity, the joy that only Christ can give, the one who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.